Happy Mother's Day. Good morning and welcome to the online service of Fort Caroline Christian Church in Jacksonville, Florida. In case you're joining us today for the first time, my name is Don Holsey. I'm the lead minister with this congregation and I look forward to meeting you in person someday when we are able to be together again. Will you join me now as we start our worship in a time of prayer? Heavenly Father, your church may be physically separated today because of the coronavirus, but we are united in our love for you. We want to praise you for who you are, for you are worthy of glory and honor. May our worship reflect our love for you. May the songs and the words of our mouths exalt you as we proclaim you Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We thank you for a special day to honor the mothers you've given us. And we ask for a special blessing upon all mothers today. May they know the love of their children. May they be overwhelmed by your love for them. And may our mothers know that you have created them in your image and given them such a special ministry for your kingdom. These things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
in the summer rain my life celebrates you are good you are good with the cry was lost 
lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed, my chains are gone. morning for Caroline Christian Church and this day we're preparing for the Lord's Supper and just know that it's symbols the bread and the juice or the wine whatever you have that's what you use because it's the heart that is what really counts in all of this I want to share with you from John uh, chapter 10 verse 7 through 18 so Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come to me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life 
so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. In these times of the COVID-19, I take assurance in knowing that Jesus has my life. In Acts chapter 18, verse 9, And the Lord said to Paul in the night by a vision, Do not be afraid any longer. But go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no man will attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in this city. He is our shepherd, and he does protect us, and we are part of his flock. But there are many that are not, and this is an opportunity we've had with COVID-19 to share our beliefs, our faith with others. In John 6, 52, through 58, we talk of the communion, the bread of life. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, he who eats this bread will live forever. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity, an opportunity to share both your word, your faith, and the faith that you instilled in us. Lord, I thank you for the assurance of you taking care of me. Lord, I ask that you give me the sense to be sensible, but the faith to be strong. Lord, as we take of this bread that's your body and this wine that is your blood, we just ask that you prepare every heart that receives. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Mother's Day again. Hey, the top 10 things that moms really want for Mother's Day. Are you ready for them? Top 10 things moms really want for Mother's Day. Number 10, to be able to eat a whole candy bar alone and drink something without any floaters in it. Number nine, to have a teenager answer the question without rolling her eyes 
and saying, why is this woman really my mother? Number eight, five pounds of chocolate that don't add 20 pounds. Number seven, a long bubble bath without anyone knocking on the door. Number six, a full-time cleaning person that just happens to look like Brad Pitt. Number five, for a teenager to announce, hey, mom, I got a full scholarship for college and a job all on the same day. Number four, a grocery store that doesn't have candy, gum, cheap toys, all displayed at the checkout line. Number three, to have a family meal without a sibling fight, a bad attitude, and with sincere appreciation for the effort that was involved in preparing the meal. Number two, to be able to open the child's bedroom and find it miraculously clean and smelling lovely. And number one, top things that mom wants for Mother's Day, four words, quarantine over, school open. Being a mom is not an easy thing. In fact, there is a job description for mothers that you can find online. Here's what it says, job description for mothers, long-term team player needed for challenging permanent work in an often chaotic environment. Candidates must possess excellent communication and organizational skills and be willing to work variable hours, which include evenings and weekends and sometimes 24-hour shifts. Some overnight travel required, including trips to primitive camping sites on rainy weekends and endless sports tournaments in faraway cities. Travel expenses not reimbursed. Some of the responsibilities of this job must be willing to be hated, at least temporarily, until someone needs $5. Must be willing to bite your tongue repeatedly. Must possess the physical stamina of a pack mule and be able to go from zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds flat in case this time the screams from the backyard are not someone just crying wolf. Must be willing to face stimulating technical challenges such as small gadget repair, mysteriously sluggish toilets, and stuck zippers. Must maintain calendars and coordinate production of multiple homework projects must have the ability to plan and organize social gatherings for clients of all ages, must be able to find things that belong to others which are hidden from them because, well, they just really didn't look, must handle assembly and product safety testing for half a million cheap plastic toys and battery-operated devices, must always hope for the best but be prepared for the worst must assume final, complete accountability for the quality of the end product. And responsibilities also include maintenance and janitorial work throughout the facility. The possibility for advancement and promotion? Virtually none. Your job is to remain in the same, for, for same position for years without complaining, constantly retraining and updating your skills so that those in your charge may one day surpass you. Previous experience, none required, unfortunately. On the job training is offered on a continuously exhausting basis. Wages and comprehension, now this is the best part. Love and admiration for the rest of your life. Being a mom has got to be the hardest job in the world. But don't think that your children do not appreciate all that you've done for them. Here's another list of things learned from moms. Someone composed a list of the important things that his mother taught him. Number one was, my mother taught me logic because I said so. That's why my mother taught me foresight. Now make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. My mother taught me how to become an, an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait until your father gets home. My mother taught me the importance of family. If you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. Number six, my mother taught me about time travel. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. My mother taught me about religion. You better pray that stain will come out of the carpet. My mother taught me about sympathy. 
Oh, keep crying. I'll give you something to cry about. My mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. And the all time favorite thing his mother taught him was justice. One day you're going to have kids of your own and they'll turn out just like you. Just wait, you'll see. Mother's Day is a perfect day to reflect. If your mother's still alive, it's a day to tell her thank you. If your mother's not alive, it's a day to praise God for the gift that he bestowed on us in the form of our mother. In honor of mothers, I'd like to speak about motherhood with reference to the influence that they have. I do not think that we can ever really understand the influence of our mothers, but the Bible gives us the proof. And that proof is found in the book of First and Second Timothy, which, in, which is a letter that Paul wrote to a young evangelist named Timothy. In Acts chapter 16, Paul is in a city named Lystra, in a country that we now know as Turkey. Here Paul meets Timothy, who's already a disciple of Jesus. Paul was so impressed with this young man that he invited Timothy to join him on his missionary journeys. Timothy became like a spiritual son to Paul. He was faithful partner in ministry with Paul. And when these two letters, the first and second Timothy were written, Paul was sitting in prison in Rome. He didn't know whether he would live or die. And so he wrote these two short epistles to Timothy for the purpose of encouraging him. To Paul, these may be his last words that he ever gets to share with Timothy, the young man he's grown to love as a spiritual son in the faith. So in writing to Timothy, Paul gives credit where credit is due, and it's not to pat himself on the back. Paul knows that he did not lead Timothy to faith in Jesus. He didn't take credit for the spiritual foundation in Timothy's life. Yes, Paul did mentor Timothy over the years, but the foundation of Timothy's relationship to Jesus was already laid many years ago before Paul ever met him. Today, we celebrate the mothers, the grandmothers, and the other women who have filled the role of a mother in our lives. And on this day, we honor the influence these women had in our lives, especially spiritual influence. So I would like to look at the passage of scripture that is found in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. And this is what it says. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. In 2 Timothy verse 1, chapter 1, verse 5, we have three keys for creating a godly legacy of faith. The first one, the first legacy of faith is that Eunice and Lois had a sincere faith. Eunice and Lois had a sincere faith. It was evident to Paul that the faith of Eunice and Lois was very sincere. It was not hypocritical. It was not a do as I say, not as I do type of faith. Timothy's mom and grandma had sincere faith. It was consistent. It didn't waver. It was genuine. It did not change from day to day or from situation to situation. They truly believed that Jesus was the Son of God. They sincerely believed that Jesus was both Lord and Savior. They had no doubt that a life lived in obedience to Jesus is the only life worth living. A sincere faith is a legacy that mothers and grandmothers and all women should strive for. A sincere faith is a legacy that we all should seek to have. The second key to a legacy of faith is that Eunice and Lois had a living faith. Their faith was living. Paul said that Timothy's faith had first lived in his grandmother Lois and then lived in his mother Eunice. This faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior now lived in Timothy. A living faith is one that is practiced and lived out in everyday life. A living faith knows what God's word says and is obedient to what is relevant and what is revealed in God's word. A living faith applies the scriptures to all areas of life. A living faith is one 
that others can witness through our behavior. You know, there were once four scholars who were arguing over Bible translations. One said he thought the King James Version was the best because of its beautiful and eloquent style of speech. Another said he preferred the American Standard Bible for its accurate translation of the original text. The third scholar preferred the New International Version because of its modern language and ease of understanding. After thinking about it for a moment, the fourth scholar said, I have always preferred my mother's translation. When the others expressed surprise, saying that they didn't know what he was talking about, he responded, my mother translated the Bible. She translated it into life. And that's the best translation that I've ever seen. A third key to having a, a legacy of faith is that Eunice and Lois shared a faith. They had a shared faith. This sincere and living faith began in Lois, Timothy's grandmother. Her faith was obviously shared to her daughter, Eunice, who is Timothy's mother. And together they both shared their faith with Timothy, starting when he was just an infant. Now this wasn't just Eunice's faith or Lois's faith. The faith that had been shared by his mother and grandchildren now belonged to Timothy himself. You've probably heard the saying, God has no grandchildren. You see, the faith that was shared by his mother and his grandmother, the faith that was living in his mother and grandmother, the sincere faith, the living faith, was now owned personally by Timothy as an adult. The Apostle Paul reminds Timothy of the influence of that faith that was shared to him by his mother and grandmother. In two chapters over, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17, it says, Continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. From infancy, Timothy's grandmother and mother shared their faith, and they shared God's word with little Timmy. They did not just speak to Timothy on one occasion about their faith. They shared their faith in God throughout his young life, starting when he was infant. The legacy of faith that was given to Timothy was built upon scriptures. From being a baby, Timothy had been taught the holy scriptures. In addition to knowing the godly character of these two women who taught him, Timothy had also been taught God's word, which made him wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Timothy's mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, knew the value of God's word. They knew it was useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. And they ensured that young Timothy, starting from childhood, knew God's word. I imagine they helped him memorize it. They read it to him. They explained it to him. But most importantly, they lived it out for him. For Eunice and Lois knew that God's word would make Timothy into a man of God who was thoroughly equipped for every good work. There was a passage in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's called the Shema. It's part of the, the, the Bible that the, all the Israel would memorize. It was such an important passage. It would be equivalent to John 3.16 of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 through 9 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Mothers, grandmothers, 
teach your children God's word. Teach it to them from an early age. Teach it to them every day, throughout the day, in whatever it is that you're doing. Live it out in your life. Make it visible in your home. As Paul contemplated the possibility that he may never leave prison, and he could be put to death, he knew Timothy was real well grounded in his faith. Paul knew that he may never leave prison alive, but the gospel was not dead. The gospel was not chained. The gospel was not in prison. It was very much alive and firm in the life of Timothy because of his mother and his grandmother. So Paul wrote to Timothy to remind him of his legacy of faith. He reminded Timothy of his roots, the two women that influenced him the most, his mother and his grandmother. Paul specifically points out that the genuine faith that is in you and recalls that his faith was transmitted to him by these two women. This legacy of faith started Timothy's grandmother. She passed it on to her mother, who passed it on to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, Paul instructs Timothy to take this faith that began in his grandmother Lois and pass down to Eunice, and share it with others, and trust it to others, who will be faithful to teach it to others. The greatest thing you can give your children and your grandchildren is a legacy of faith, a legacy of faith that's built on God's Word. The Bible must be a central part of our lives, not just for ourselves, but so that it will be transmitted for generations to come. There's no greater legacy for a grandmother or a mother than for their children and grandchildren to have a strong relationship with God due to the example that's been set before them. So the question is, what are we building our legacies on? Are we building it on money, knowledge, material things? Are we building our legacy on traditions? What will your children, your grandchildren, and other loved ones remember you for. There's great comfort and joy in having a family legacy of faith. It began with his grandmother, continued in his mother, and now lives in Timothy. He passed it on to others. Nearly 2,000 years later, that same sincere, living, shared faith lives in us and continues to be passed on to the next generation, who will pass it on to the next generation. And the little book called Third John doesn't even have chapters. Third John, in verses 3 and 4, it says, It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell me about your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. The best way to honor our mothers and our grandmothers and all the other women of faith in our life is to give them joy, the joy of knowing that we're walking in the truth because of their example and their teaching and their influence. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for creating women. Thank you for the great grandmothers, the grandmothers, the moms. Thank you that we can see you in them as they care for their children with love and compassion and grace, characteristics that you yourself have. Father, we ask for a special blessing on all moms today during these trying times. Give them extra strength that only you can provide. Give them wisdom from above. Give them peace and rest in your presence. God, we ask that all of us would leave a legacy of faith to those that you have entrusted to our care and influence. May we always demonstrate Jesus in our lives. May we preach your word through the example of our actions. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. As we close out our time together today, I want to thank you for sharing uh, on our online services. Um, I want to thank you for sharing these with other people on your Facebook page. 
Uh, we have people joining us, worshiping with us from all over the United States and even from around the world. I want to thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings. Your generosity has been amazing and allowed us to continue to not only pay bills, but support our missionary partners. So thank you. Thank you for being faithful stewards of the resources that God has provided. We ask that you would continue to pray for our nation's leaders and nations around the world, that they would seek God's wisdom in this pandemic. Pray for the leadership at Fort Caroline Christian Church as we continue to plan for a future reopening of our worship services and ministries. We hope that day will come very soon. I want to remind you again, let our elders or myself know if you have any prayer needs or physical needs that we can help you with. We love you. We miss seeing each other. So please stay safe until we can be together again. And have a blessed Mother's Day. Cry.